Well, hello, friends, and welcome to the Marley Bird YouTube channel brought to you by Yarnspirations.com. In this video, I will show you how to make the cowl neck crochet dog coat. Dog coats and dog sweaters are a big hit in the fall and winter season because we want to make sure that our four-legged loved ones are covered up in our love when we have to take them out for a walk in the cold, right? Well, this crochet dog coat is super easy and very beginner friendly. It uses simple, simple stitches to create this lovely little pattern. And at the very end, you put it all together and you add some nice buttons. So you can have a little bit of whimsy to the dog coat. This is a free pattern available at yarnspirations.com. I've put a link to the pattern in the video description box right below this video. And while you're down there, smash that like button as my kids say, you guys know the drill there. If you have not yet subscribed to the Marley Bird YouTube channel, be sure to do that as well. Once you download the pattern, you will notice there is a full list of materials right here. You will need two different colors of Red Heart Heat Wave yarn or any other size four worsted weight yarn will work. You need a size G or four millimeter crochet hook or the size needed to obtain gauge, a tape measure, some stitch markers, a good pair of scissors, and those really cute buttons as I mentioned at the start. I'm excited to make this cute little dog coat for my Chihuahua Lucy. So let's go ahead, grab your hook and your yarn and that free pattern, and we'll get started. Before we can jump in with the actual instructions, it's important to note that this pattern is written for three different sizes. You wanna make sure as you're following along with the instructions, you are working with the number that pertains to the size you're making. Yarnspirations writes their patterns in such a way that each size has its own color, which is really convenient if you print off your pattern in color. But you can also know what size pertains or what number pertains to what size based on its location in the pattern. For example, the size small, which is the smallest size given, will be the first number outside of the parentheses. The second size, in this case is a medium, will be the first number inside the parentheses. The third size, which is the size large, will be the second number inside the parentheses, so on and so forth. So as you're following along with the pattern, if you were making the size large, which here is a color green, and it's the second number inside the parentheses, you will always make sure you follow along with the second number inside the parentheses, for your instructions. It's always handy to even take a, a pencil or a pen and circle that number that you are following along. Uh, so that way, if you should put the pattern down and pick it up later on, you know exactly what size you were making. All right, so that's the biggest thing to make note of. Here at the beginning, we are going to start off with the cowl portion and that uses our color A. And color A for me is that really pretty gray color called swim shorts. And we begin with a slip knot. Place the tail of your yarn in the palm of your hand. Take your working yarn, wrap around your forefinger and your middle finger, and when you come back up, cross over. Turn your hand over, and now you can take your hook, go underneath that first loop and grab the back one and pull it out. Remove your fingers and you now have a slip knot directly onto your hook. Now we want to go ahead and we will chain the number of chains needed for the size you're making. For me, I am going to make the size small for my Chihuahua, so I would chain 16. When you go to count your chains, it's always nice to rest them flat just like so, so you can see the V, that's the top of the chain, and we can count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I never count the loop on my hook as a stitch. Now I will go ahead and in the second chain from hook, so not the first one but the second one, I will work a single crochet. And it doesn't matter if I go into the top loop, the back loop, or the bump of the stitch, okay? So right there. 
You just need to work into the chain the best way you can get into it and complete a single crochet. Once we place that single crochet in the second chain from hook, we will single crochet all the way down the row till the very end. When you get to the very end, go ahead and count the number of single crochet to make sure it matches with the number given for the size you're making. Once you have established that it is the same number, we can move on to row two. Row two is very simple in that you will chain one and turn. You can turn and then chain one, either way works. And we will single crochet into each single crochet all the way to the end. We will repeat row two until this piece of our work, so until the cowl measures either 10 inches for the size small, 15 inches for the size medium, or 22 and a half inches for the size large. Okay? I've already completed the cowl portion of my dog coat. You can take a look at it right here. You can see that I have the cowl portion complete. It is 10 inches long. And when I was working up my cowl, I had to change my hook size. My stitches were too small with the G hook, so I had to go up to an H hook. So I had to transition to an H hook to get my stitches to work out. And I am ready to go ahead and join my main color in the last stitch of my row and I've already broken off my color A. So what I will do here is I will go into the last stitch like I'm going to single crochet, yarn over, pull up a loop, and now I will grab my main color, which is bikini for me. I'm letting a nice tail happen here because you wanna make sure it doesn't uh, make it super, you don't make it too difficult to weave in later. Yarn over with my new color and pull that through. So what that will do is it makes it so that my new color doesn't bleed down here into my old color, but I have my new color on my hook ready to go, okay? If I wanted to tie these two pieces together, I could do that, and as long as I untie them later on to weave them in, that works, okay? So I'm just gonna tie those to leave them in place. Now that we have our main color joined, it's time for us to carry on with the body. Now, the body of the dog coat is worked along the side of the cowl you just made. So depending on the size you're making, you are going to be working double crochets as evenly as possible along the side of the cowl. The best way I know how to make sure that my double crochets are as evenly spaced as possible is to divide up the piece I'm gonna be working into into sections. So what I like to do is take my cowl and fold it in half, and then take a marker and put it roughly at the halfway point. Now take this half of the half and fold it. Take another marker and put it at the halfway point. And we'll do the same over on this side. We'll take half of the half, take a marker, and put it at the halfway point. Now, when we open this up, we have four sections. One, two, three, four. And we can divide up the number of stitches you need to work into the entire row, divide it by four, and put a um, number of double crochets into each section. If you're making the size small, you wanna do 33. For a medium, it's 49, and for a large, it's 73. So we wanna place that many double crochets. We begin the body with a chain three, and that's for all sizes. And this chain three will ultimately count as a double crochet, but it does not count in the number of double crochets you will be placing in the side of your cowl. So I still want to do 33 double crochets for the size small. Now, 33 divided by four roughly means I need to do eight, 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 and nine. So I will start off here and just begin placing double crochets along the edge. And I am just going along the edge, going through a space that 
I can just see there. So there's no really rhyme or reason other than I'm just trying to space them out roughly the same distance apart. So that way it's not totally noticeable that maybe one has a little bit more space between um, its neighbor than the previous one. So let's take a look here, I'm to my marker. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I need to do one more and that will be my number eight. And I want to do that again. So there's my marker. I usually take my marker out at that point and I put it into the stitch that I just finished. And that lets me know that was the last stitch of that section. And now I carry on. I want to make sure I get eight to the next marker. You can go ahead and carry on in your pattern doing the exact same thing. And at the end of the row, we will count to make sure we have the correct number of double crochets. Once you have all your double crochets finished, go ahead, take a minute, and count to make sure you have the total number needed in your pattern. For the size small, you will have 34. For the size medium, you will have 50. And for the size large, you will have 74. Don't forget to count that initial chain three as a double crochet because it is counted as a double crochet now and throughout. Once you have confirmed that you have the correct number of double crochets needed, you can take your markers out. Don't let them go far though. I'm going to show you how to use a marker at the ends of your row to make sure that everything is straight and the way it needs to, have to, to be worked. So we will turn our work and we move on to row two, which has us begin with a chain three. And remember that counts as a stitch. So I will grab a marker and I want to place that marker into the chain behind the loop on my hook, okay? I'm gonna place that marker into the chain behind the loop on my hook. What that signifies there is that is the last stitch of my row. So when you get to the end of the row next time, you will know that your very last stitch needs to go into that marked stitch. Now we want to go ahead and place a double crochet into this very first stitch. And this is going to increase the number of stitches we have on this row, okay? So we just worked a double crochet into that first stitch. Now we want to double crochet into each stitch all the way to the end, and we will put two double crochet all the way down here at the end of the row. When you get to the end of the row, remember that chain three counts as a stitch. So you will put your last two double crochets into the third chain of that turning chain. So there's one and we'll put another one in the same space. And there's two, okay? So I've just increased two stitches, all right? And I will turn my work. And I want to repeat that last row two more times for the size small, six more times for the size medium, and 10 more times for the size large. So I would begin with my chain three. Remember that counts as a stitch. I will go ahead, I'll use a marker and place it into that third chain. It'll make it easier for you to find. All right, so there's one. And now I wanna place a double crochet into that same first stitch there. So I'll place a double crochet right there. Now I will place double crochets all the way down. And when I get down here to the end, I'll place two double crochets into that space or that stitch or that chain that is marked. So I can come back here and get my double crochet on. And when I get to the very end, I'll be sure to place two double crochets into that marked chain. So I have that chain right there, and I will place two double crochets into it. So there's one, and there is two. So that was my first repeat of row two. For the size small, I have to do it one more time. So I can go ahead, turn my work, chain three, Take my stitch marker and move it up, put it in that third chain, and carry on with my row two, which is my second repeat. I'm 
to the very end here and I'm ready to place my two double crochets in this last chain that I have marked here. All right, so I've done that. And the instructions tell me I'm supposed to pl place a marker at each end of the last row. So I have one marker already there. So I will go ahead and take this marker out and I'm gonna place it into the actual loop that's on my hook right now. And so now I have markers placed at the end of this last row. Depending on what size dog coat you are making, you are either done like I am with the size small, or you've got a couple more repeats to go for the medium or a large. Go ahead and complete those repeats, and we can move on to the shaping leg opening on the right side. The time has come to create the opening for the little legs of our doggies on our dog coat. So the first thing we are going to do here is turn our work. So at the end of that last row, we were supposed to turn our work and we are beginning what would be called the next row. And we have our markers in place. It says we're supposed to keep our markers there. And I start off with the chain three, so one, two and three, okay? So I have my chain three ready to go. It says double crochet in each of the next four double crochet. So I'm not increasing, so I will not put a double crochet in this very first one, but I will put one in the next one. So there's one and two and three and four, because it says I need to do that into four double crochet and turn. So I'm gonna leave all of these stitches unworked. I do want to also point out, if you wanted to add another marker into that third chain of your, double, your original double crochets that you started with right there, you could do that, so that way you can keep this section nice and straight, just like we did down here. Okay, so now I have five double crochet. One, two, three, four, five and I'm ready to turn. So I turn my work, leaving those stitches unworked. I move on to the next row, which is chain three, double crochet in each stitch all the way to the end of the row. So I do not go into that first one. Remember this chain three counts as a double. So I will double into the next four. Remember that fourth one is going to be my marked chain right there. So I will just, actually I'm gonna remove this to get into there easier. Go into that stitch. Now I like to go into the stitch. I don't go into the space. That's why I mark the actual stitch. I think it looks better, okay? So that is the end of what would be called the next row. You will repeat that row we just completed either one time for the small three times for the medium, or five times for the large. So I would go ahead, turn my work, and repeat it one time for the size small. So I would chain three. I could place my marker there if I want to. I'll go ahead and do it just for consistency purposes. And I wanna make sure I do not put one right there in that first. I'll go to the next one over. So there's one, two, three, and into this last one right here, that is four. So that gives me my total of five. Now I'm supposed to fasten off, so I go ahead and chain, I like to chain one, and then I cut my yarn, leave a nice long tail, so that way you can weave that in and just give that a pull, okay? So there is that, that finishes the right side opening for me. If you're making the other sizes, you have a couple more rows to complete. Now that that portion is complete, we're ready to move on to the center of our dog coat. And just for orientation purposes, I want you to understand what we've just done. This section here we just created, this is the part of the coat that will go on the underbelly of the dog. 
we are going to skip four stitches here and rejoin yarn and work across a center section of the coat right here. This center section is what will be on the back of the dog. It'll be the top of the dog, okay? And then we will then skip some stitches and work a little bit over here on this edge of the dog coat that will resemble this edge. And that again will be the belly of the dog. So these portions that we're leaving open and when I said skipping four stitches, that's for the size small that I'm creating. For the larger sizes, you will skip either seven stitches for the medium or nine stitches for the large. But those skip stitches, that's the section where the dog's um, arms or legs or paws are gonna fit through the coat so that it stays in place, okay? Just so that you have better orientation of what's going on here. This is also, you'll notice I did not turn on the last row. This is considered the right side or the public side of our fabric, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a marker and just place it right here on the right side of the fabric. Yes, I like markers, but it's essentially to give me a clue of this is the right side. So that way I have a better um, orientation of what's going on, okay? I hope that helps you out as well. I know having a better understanding of what I am creating helps me a ton. So let's go ahead and jump into the center bit. On this center bit, we're going to build stitches right here. Remember, this is going to be on the back of the dog. So we start here and we skip four. One, two, three, four. And that's for the size small. Once again, you would skip seven for the size medium, nine for the size large. Then it says join yarn with a slip stitch into the next double crochet. So in the next double crochet, I will put my hook into it, grab my yarn, and I will yarn over my hook and pull up a loop and then yarn over and draw through that loop on my hook. So that has joined this yarn with a slip stitch, okay? And I can now carry on. I will chain three and I will double crochet in each of the next 21 stitches or 33 for the medium, 53 for the large. So I wanna do 21. So I make sure I don't join into the one I just did the slip stitch. I go to the next one and I will work a double crochet. So there's one, so I need 20 more. Once you have all of the stitches you need to create, you will not work the remaining stitches. We will ignore those and we will turn our work. Okay, so now after this last row, I have 22 stitches, including my chain three. If you did a medium, you have 34 stitches. If you did a large, you have 54 stitches, okay? So let's go ahead, we carry on with the second row and we chain three, one, two, three, and I will work a double crochet into each stitch all the way to the end of the row. When you get to the end of the row, make sure you do place that double crochet into the last chain of that chain three, and we will turn our work. You will repeat that last row one time for the size small, three times for the size medium, five times for the size large. Once you've repeated it, the number of times that you need to do for the size you're making, you will finish off your work just like you did on the right side or the right side of the dog's body, not the right side of the fabric. <laughs> it gets very confusing. I'm gonna go ahead and work my next repeat because I only have one. So I've started off with my chain three and I'll work my double crochets all the way down this row. It's my last stitch, I'll go ahead. Always leave enough yarn so you can weave in your ends and give it a tug. And you'll notice I'm still on the right side of my fabric. Got my center portion completed. This is the part that would go on the back of the dog. And now I've got to come over here and we will work the left side now. So let's go ahead, grab our yarn and follow along if you are ready to go. We will go ahead and skip four, one, two, three, four, double crochet for a small, seven for a medium, nine for a large. In the next double crochet, I will join with a slip stitch 
Remember, you stick your hook into the double, yarn over your hook and pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through the loop on your hook. That's a slip stitch. And we carry on. So we will chain three. And I will double crochet in each of the next four double crochets or seven double crochets or nine double crochets, whatever um, is for the size you're making. Okay, so that gives me my five double crochets total. I will go ahead, turn my work, and I will chain three, work a double crochet in each double crochet to the end of this little section. So I'll still have five for my size. And then I will repeat that row I just completed one more time for the size small, three more times for the size medium, five more times for the size large. On this last repeat, we will not fasten off this time, okay? So at the end of this repeat right here, I am not going to fasten off like I did the others. I am going to finish my double crochet right there and not fasten off. We do not finish off with this color because we will carry on with this yarn and work a joining row on this next row. The only problem here is in this version of the pattern I have, it says the joining row is on the right side. And we just finished working a right side because we started off on the right side and then we did a wrong side row for row two and then a right side row for my, my repeat. So. I, this should the next row I'm going to do should be a wrong side. I'm sure later versions that will be changed to a wrong side. So I will carry on and I will turn my work and working across the left side. I will begin with a chain three and double crochet into each double crochet here on the left side. So there's one. Once all the left side stitches are worked, you carry on by chaining the number of ch chains equal to the number of double crochets you skipped for the leg opening. So for me, I skipped four, so I'm chaining four. For the medium, you'll chain seven. For the large, you'll chain nine. Once you've chained the number of chains you need to do, you will do one double crochet into each double crochet across this center section. So I will skip all the way over here and work double crochets all the way across the center section. All right. Don't forget that that chain three counts as a stitch. So you wanna make sure you place your stitch there. Now we're at the other opening for the dog's leg. So you want to chain Again, the same number of chains as the number of stitches you skipped. And then we will jump all the way over here to the right side and complete the double crochets along that side, just like we did the left side. Gets a little confusing with right side, left side versus right side of the fabric versus wrong side of the fabric. I know, I'm sorry. All right, and I can take this marker out because that's the last stitch of that right side. Okay, so now we're back to one solid row, one long row, and we wanna start to build double crochets again, which is really simple. We'll just double crochet along the double crochets we have. And when we get to our chains, you will double crochet into each one of the chains. It's pretty simple stuff, right? So we'll double crochet, double crochet, double crochet, double crochet, double crochet. So by the end of this next row, you will have 40 stitches if you're a size small, 64 if you're a size medium, and 96 if you're a size large. Um, so let's go ahead and pick this up. This is really, really easy stuff. I'm sure you can do it by this point. We've worked into chains before. So I start off with a chain three. Remember, I'm not increasing, so I will not place a double crochet into that first one. I'll go to the next stitch over 
and work my double crochets all the way over to where the chains begin. When I get to these chains, the designer wants us to put a double crochet into each one of the chains. So treat the chain just like you did a foundation chain and place a double crochet into each one. It's really not that difficult. I'm just going into each one as if it was the foundation chain and working a double crochet. And then I carry on. I go across the center of the body. When you get to the next chains, you simply work into each of those once again with a double crochet. Now that we have built a row of double crochets, we have something to continue on. The next portion of the pattern has us work double crochets from this point forward until this section here, the section here that we're gonna build is four inches for the size small, five inches for the size medium, or six inches for the size large from this joining row. So I wanna make sure that the next set of rows I complete, they equal four inches and they want me to end on a wrong side, okay? So I'm gonna carry on with double crochets and remember to always count your initial chain three as a double crochet stitch. And with that, I am pretty sure I have my required four inches. So I'm gonna take my tape measure and I will measure from where I did my join all the way up to where I am and I am to four inches so I can carry on. I'm also on the wrong side of my fabric. Remember, I have my marker over there. So I finished on a wrong side. So I'm ready to turn my work. I will turn my work here and we will move on to the next set of instructions, which are to shape the belly. So I am on shaping the belly instructions. It says I need to slip stitch in each of the first seven double crochet for the small, 10 for the medium, 15 for the large. So I will go ahead and go, I'm gonna go into the first one, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then pull that through. So there's one, Go to the next, and so on and so forth. There's three, four, five, six, and seven. So I've slip stitch in the first seven double crochet. I will chain three. And I'm now going to double crochet in the next 27 double crochet for the small. And that will be 45 double crochet for the medium and 67 for the large. So there's two. Once you've reached 27, you will leave the remaining stitches unworked and you will turn your work. We will chain three, so one, two, three and we will double crochet two together. So I will yarn over my hook. Do not go into the first one, go into the next one. Insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two. Yarn over your hook, go into the next stitch over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two. You have three loops on your hook. You will yarn over, draw through all three loops. We just did a decrease. We're going to double crochet into the next double crochet all the way down to the last three and we'll do a double crochet two together and a double crochet at the very end. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue on with that. I am down to my last three, so I will do my double crochet two together. I've yarned over my hook, go into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two. Yarn over my hook, go to the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through all three loops on my hook, and then work the last double crochet into that chain three. All right, you see that? So I have now decreased two. So we've decreased right here along this edge. 
you will repeat that decrease row three more times for the size small, six more times for the size medium, nine more times for the size large. Okay, the body of my work is as long as I want it to be and I have finished on a wrong side. And if I'm following with the instructions right here, it says ending with the wrong side row and then fasten off. Then I'm supposed to sew the seam of the cowl and the body to the markers. So what that means here is that I'm supposed to fasten off my work right here and then I would have another end to weave in. But I don't wanna do that because if I don't fasten it off right here, I can actually use this to work my edging, which is what I work after I do the seaming. So what I'm gonna do is I will grab a marker here. I'm gonna remove the hook, place my marker in my live loop there, okay? So I'm just gonna place my marker in my live loop there and completely ignore that. Now, I'm gonna come down here and I'm going to fold my work together. And I am going to join my cowl portion together. I'm gonna seam this together up to this point and seam this together up to where my two markers are. Now, I left these two long tails right here and I can absolutely use those to do my seaming or I can rejoin yarn. I also have this tail over here I can use. I'm gonna go ahead and use this tail to start. I'm gonna grab a bent tip tapestry needle here and I'm just gonna thread that directly onto my needle and I'm going to whip stitch these two pieces together. So essentially I'm just going to grab one side of my, I'm gonna say color A, so of the gray, grab the other side of my gray and just pull them together. And then as long as I make sure that I go stitch for stitch all the way up, I'm just going to whip my piece together. And at the very end, I will sew it up. Now, I have the right side of the fabric facing me as I do this whip stitch. And it's really not gonna matter whether you have the right side or wrong side, because once you do the whip stitch and we fold down the um, cowl neck, it'll be just fine, okay, in, in my opinion. And if you wanted to leave the cowl neck open so that maybe it looks like it's a V at the underneath the chin of the dog, you could do that if you wanted to. Um, totally up to you. Have some fun. It's a dog coat. It's meant to be a little bit of fun here. I know that my little Lucy is gonna be so happy. She is so cold in the winter especially. She's just this little tiny chihuahua. When I get to the end, just make sure it's all evened up so I don't have one side that's puckered out more than the other, okay? See, that nice little seam, just all whip stitched together. Now I can weave in my ends. Now, because this cowl is gonna be folded just like that, I am gonna go ahead and weave in my ends on this side here, okay? So I'm just going to pop my tail down and then make sure you go through several stitches, you guys. You wanna make sure that your tail is really woven in and you wanna do the same with your other tail. And this is what you would do for all of the tails that you have remaining on your piece as far as weaving them in. Just make sure you weave them through stitches, okay? And it's always best to go back and forth like a snake. And I actually split the yarn when I weave in my tails because it helps grab at the fiber, okay? I never add a knot. Knots are not good, all right? So there, I'll just go back one more time just to bring that in there. Take these two and snip them. And then I can fold this down. You can see that's the cowl collar for the doggy. 
And now I can do the same thing for the pink portion. I can use my tail here and I will just whip stitch it together down to these two markers that we used and then I can remove those markers. See, here's the opening for the doggy's legs. You get to the point where you've reached those markers, go ahead and remove the markers. And then we are going to weave this tail into the inside so that way it doesn't show. And just weave it down. All right, so this is the seamed portion. We have the cowl neck, the seam, and then the body of our piece. Now remember, I put my stitch marker right here to hold that loop. We didn't actually finish off, and here's why. The next set of instructions say we're supposed to join with a slip stitch right here at the seam, and then working all the way around this edging, Okay, working all the way around this edging, putting three stitches at all of the corners, we're supposed to work a round of very simple single crochet. Well, my question is why rejoin? So let's go ahead and just do single crochets now. Instead of having it start right here, we will start down here. So I will turn my work, this is the right side of my work facing me, remember? There's my marker. See how handy those markers are? I can go ahead and remove it now. And I'm right here, the edge of my work. And I will, instead of joining, I will just place this loop on my hook and carry on as if I joined at the seam. So this would be a chain one. So I'm supposed to join with a slip stitch and chain one and work a round of single crochets evenly and make sure I put three single crochets in the corners. So this is a corner. So let's go ahead and place our three single crochets right here. So I've chained one and I will place three single crochets in this corner. And then I will single crochet evenly to the next corner. And this is an entire round we're gonna be working here, you guys. When I get to this corner, remember I'm gonna work into the third chain of that turning chain and I will just place three single crochets there because that is a corner, right? So now I just keep on going here, okay? I'm gonna keep on going. I will just work single crochets evenly. So that there is not a set number of single crochets you're supposed to do. Just make sure your fabric is laying nice and flat. I'm at a corner right here, so I'm going to place three single crochets there. See, it just gives it a nice little, nice little finish. You'll notice I am just putting my hook wherever it wants to go, and I'm just kind of checking as I go along making sure that the fabric is nice and flat, that it's not curling up or cupping in or looking wavy. I just want it to be nice and even. You'll see here, sometimes I hold the fabric with my fingers down here just to make sure it's straight so I can see really well how the fabric is working, right? You see that? Just makes it easier for me 
to be able to work those stitches and make sure they're nice and uniform. When you come up here, I'm coming up here and I'm gonna be up here to the seam. This is where the designer wanted me to start, which I totally could have started there. Like if you wanna start there, you absolutely can. I just didn't wanna have to weave in another end and I figured why not? I already finished on the wrong side. If I turned my work, I'd be on the right side and I could do just what I'm doing. So I just thought I would show you how you could do that too. So I'm gonna come up here, this is where the seam is, and just carry on. Carry on over, and down the other side now. Now I did put three into this corner here, and three into that corner there. So on this side, I'll put three into this corner here, and I'll put three into that corner there. When I get to the end of my round, remember I already started with my three single crochet, so I will simply slip stitch into the first single crochet I completed, and then finish off my work. So now I'm left with just one tail to weave in versus two. So here I am, that's my nice edging. If I lay it flat this way, let me turn it around. You can see here, there is my edging for the belly. So this is the belly of the dog coat. How cute is that? Super easy and we are ready to move on. Now if you wanted to add another round on yours or add another color to yours, you absolutely could do that. You don't have to stop here, totally up to you. But now we're ready to move on to the leg edging. Before we go to the leg edging, I do wanna show you how to weave in these ends because it makes it handy to have all those ends woven in at this point before you move on to this next step. So let me show you with this tail that we have here. I'm looking at the wrong side of the fabric and I am just going to go into literally the base of the row. Can you see it looks like they're upside down Vs? All right, so I'm just gonna thread it through a couple of those and come across and give that a nice tug. And then I will skip over one of those legs of the Vs and come back along that same path. All right, and I'm gonna do that one more time. I'm gonna skip over a V and I'm gonna come across this path. This time I'm splitting the yarn just a little bit and that just splits the fiber and it helps the fiber catch any of the tails that might want to come undone. Now that is secure enough for this uh, particular item. If I wanted to go down the actual post of stitches, I could do that as well. So I could go down a post and then work my way back up the post and be done that way. The trick here is that you just wanna make sure you weave it through a couple different directions several times. But that's essentially it. That's how you would weave in your tails. At this point in time, weave in all of your tails that you still have loose, because as we move on to the leg edging, we will work one full round with our main color, and then we go into our contrasting color, or for me, the gray. So you're gonna have a lot of tails hanging out there. So if you don't weave in the ones that are loose right now, now, it's gonna get a little bit hectic. So go ahead and take the time to do that right now. All right, so having said that, I am ready to go. So I have the right side of my fabric facing me, and I, I know that because it's all seamed up, and again, I, I know this is the right side. And I'm going to pick one of the leg openings. What we are going to do is we are gonna join with a slip stitch at any point on this leg opening, and then we will chain one and single crochet evenly around this um, opening here. So we don't have a set number of single crochet we're supposed to do, we're just supposed to single crochet evenly around this, okay? So we will go ahead, grab our hook, grab our main color, and pick a point at which you wanna join with your slip stitch. Again, leave a nice, nice long tail 
for you to weave in later. All right, so there I am joined with my slip stitch. I will chain one and I will work one full round of single crochets as even as possible. When you get back to the start, you go ahead, join with a slip stitch to the first single crochet you did and you will fasten off your work. So I like to do that chain one and then cut my yarn leaving a nice long tail. So now what I've essentially done here is I've set up a nice round of single crochets for me to work into with my color A, okay? Now you can go ahead and jump to the next step at this point, but I am gonna go ahead and do my single crochets around my other leg opening as well. All right, so I have my openings done, my edging around my openings. I think this one has a couple more single crochets than this one, but I don't think it's gonna show too much. All right, so at this point, I like to go ahead and weave in my tails once again. I like them out of the way, so I'm gonna do that, and then we can move on to the leg ribbing. Now the leg ribbing is made separate from the entire piece and then seamed to that leg edging that we just completed. So let's go ahead and grab our color A once again. So we will grab our color A and we will put a slip knot on our hook and chain six. Once you've chained six, you will single crochet in the second chain from hook, so not the first, but the second, and then in each chain to the end. You then, for row two, will chain one, so you turn and chain one, and then working in the back loop only. So this is important. If you look at the top of your stitches, they look like a V. We're gonna work in the back loop only. We're gonna work in that back loop and we will single crochet into each stitch all the way to the end. And what this will do is give the look of ribbing on this portion of the dog coat. This is called a single crochet ribbing. And by working in the back loop, we're creating these nice ridges, all right? So then you chain one, turn, and you do it all over again, working in the back loop only. You carry on with the leg ribbing, working those single crochets through the back loop only until your piece measures five inches for the small, six inches for the medium, or eight inches for the large. Don't forget you have to make two because there are two leg openings. So these are both five inches. Once you have reached the five inches, you will then go ahead and we are going to seam this closed, okay? So I will grab my bent tip tapestry needle here and I will grab one of those tails. And it's handy if you leave your tails extra long this time because we could use them to seam them to the opening. So here we are. I'm just going to bring one edge to the other and just like we did for the um, bottom of the body, we're just gonna whip stitch these together. Okay. All right, so we have that nice and whipped stitch together. Now we want to go ahead and use this tail to seam it to the, let's move my notes out of the way, seam it to this opening. Before I do that though, I am going to go ahead and just make sure that my tail is woven in on the inside, the one that I just used to seam this up. Just take a minute 
and weave that in. Whenever you can weave in your tails as you work along, I always highly recommend doing that. That way you're not at the very end of your project and you have to weave in all of the tails. Always weave in as you go. That is a good rule of thumb for all crochet projects in my opinion. All right, so I have that one woven in nice and neat. Snip that out of the way, and here we go. I'm just going to use my tail here, again with my tapestry needle, and I will line this up the best I can to the, the edging that we created. If I wanted to use stitch markers, remember the stitch markers we have? We could use those to hold things in place to kind of make sure that we are getting this as even as we possibly can. So let's see here, I'm just gonna fold this up and this is about the other half. So let's just pop those together. Stitch markers are super handy for purposes just like this. All right, those together and then we have, where is my end? So this is where we're gonna start there and so this one over here Ta -da. and now we can begin to just whip stitch this into place when you're done you can remove all your stitch markers and you have your nice little ribbing. And now we can do the same thing over here on this one. For this leg ribbing, I wanna show you how you would join a new strand of yarn to begin seaming, just in case you left your tail too short. So let me get this leg ready to go and I'll show you how to do that. It's really quite easy, but some of you might like to see that. All right, so I have this leg ready to go and I'm ready to seam it to that portion. So I'm going to grab a length of yarn that I think is long enough to go all the way around the opening. And I'd rather err on the side of having it too long. So I will keep it just a little bit longer than what I possibly need, okay? Now I can use my markers once again to center this as much as I possibly can just to help me as I'm seaming around. So I'm gonna use my markers and just, I just put the cuff in half and this is just a rough estimate guys, okay? So just roughly just placing it in a position that I think looks relatively even all the way around, okay? Pretty simple. All right, so once those are all in place, I then can take my yarn here that I'm going to use and let's get started. I like to go through the leg portion first. I'm just coming down here at the start and I'm gonna pull it through to a part where I still have some tail. And then I'm going to pop through the pink and leave that tail. My hand is on the inside. You can see I'm grasping the tail so it doesn't go anywhere. And then I just continue on working my whip stitch. Now I know that there are some people out there who will add a, a knot to where the tail is so that way it doesn't go anywhere. And you could do that if you want to. But I know that knots in my crochet or in my knitting um, tend to bother me when I'm wearing a sweater. And the last thing I want is for the sweater to have a knot in it and it irritates my dog. So I'm not going to add a knot um, just because I don't want to do that. So I am not going to knot. I will just weave in that tail later on. And you'll see here, I'm just going around those markers, just ignoring them and just seaming it up. Once you get back to the start, you can simply put your tail on the inside and this is how you would finish either, either way, whether you began with a new piece of yarn or with your tail. And on the inside here, you simply weave in your ends and this portion of the dog coat will be complete. 
And with that, this portion of your dog coat is complete. You have the nice ribbed leg right there, both of them, and it's super cute. Now at this point, I could probably put this on my dog and it wouldn't fall off. It'd probably stay on with the neck and the feet the way they are with the legs. But this pattern is written to have a belly strap and that's where the buttons come into play as well. So what we will do now is create the belly strap and we do that using our main color. So I'm gonna grab my bikini again. <laughs> that sounded funny. I'll grab the bikini color again and we will get started. So we will put a slip knot on our hook and we will chain 11. Once we chain 11, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Once you chain 11, you will single crochet in the second chain from hook and in each single crochet to the end. So you will have a total of 10 single crochets. When you get to the end of row one, you will turn your work, chain three, and this is a buttonhole row. So we will double crochet in the first single crochet we're supposed to work into. Remember that chain three counts as a stitch, so not that one, but the one over. We will chain one, skip a single, and double crochet in the next four singles. So there's one, two, three, four, chain one, skip a single, and single crochet in the last two. So there's one and two, okay? So those chain ones where we chained one and skipped a stitch, that is our buttonhole. Now that we've completed row two, row three is simply double crocheting. We'll make sure we have a double crochet in each stitch and in that chain one space or the chain one stitch that you created. So that way we still have 10 stitches and we will work this until it measures five inches. So we will begin row three with a chain three. Remember that counts as a double. So we will not put a double there, but we'll put a double right here. I'll put a double into this chain one, okay? Because we don't want our stitch count to change. And then I'll put a double into each of the next four doubles. Put a double into this chain one. and then put a double in the next two. So my stitch count has not changed, and I'm back to just one full row of doubles, and I have those two buttonholes. So now I'm going to work this until this measures five inches, okay? So it's the same thing over and over. Chain three, and then double crochet across. You repeat row three until your piece measures approximately five inches, ending with the wrong side. Now row one was a wrong side, so I just ended with a wrong side, and I'm ready to do my second buttonhole. So I will turn my work, I will chain three, I will double crochet in the next double crochet, I will chain one, skip one double crochet, double crochet in the next four double. Chain one, skip a double, and double crochet in the last two. So there's one and two. I now will turn my work, this is the last row, I will chain one and I will single crochet into each stitch and each chain all the way down this row. So there's those two singles, this is a chain one, so I'm going to single crochet into my chain one, single crochet into the next four doubles, 
single crochet into the chain one and then single crochet in the last two doubles. So this is the belly strap, okay? So this is the belly strap. If I can get into that last third chain there. There we are. And now I'm supposed to fasten off. So I chain one. I'll go ahead and cut my yarn, leaving a nice long tail. All right, so now I can weave in those tails these are my buttonholes, okay, right there. And what will happen here is I will sew my buttons on either side of the belly, okay? And I wanna make sure that my, my strap here will go around those buttonholes, or those buttons, and it will secure the coat to the belly of the dog, okay? So you can look here, on page three of the pattern, you can actually see the placement of the buttons that they used in this picture. It looks like it's directly underneath the legs of the dog. So I don't know if that's too far. That feels like that would really restrict the piece. So you, you can play around with this a little bit. Um, I think I'm gonna place my buttons like right underneath. Let's see here, they have it up a couple. So I'll probably place them right around, right around there. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna weave in my tails on the belly strap and then I will sew on the buttons and show you what it looks like. I chose these cute little panda buttons because I just thought they were adorable. And as far as the placement of the buttons, I think that's something that you are just gonna have to play around with on the dog that you are making yours for. I did mine a little bit closer. I seamed mine up a little, or attached my buttons a little bit closer to the seam. Um, it seemed to fit. Lucy a little bit better there. You'll notice I also added an edging around the belly strap. I just felt like the belly strap needed a little something, so I did an edging there. But that is the bottom of my dog coat. There's the top of my dog coat. And now let's try it on my dog. Lucy Lou, Lucy, are you in here? Come here. Come here, babies. Come here, babies. Where's your babies? Come here, Luce. Okay, we have little, little Lucy here. She's a little bit skittish, but we have the dog coat on her. It fits very nicely. Um, let me see if I can hold her up a little bit. She is so skittish in front of the lights. You can see it fits so cute and it's the perfect length for her. I did shorten it up a little bit on the, what was called the belly shaping. So that way it wasn't super long on her, but this is the little Lucy Lou. Ah, say hello, Lucy Lou, in the cute little strap right down there, the belly strap. I think she is adorable. She's already, she's shaking. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed learning how to make this cowl neck, oh, big kisses. Oh, a little yawn. This cowl neck crochet dog coat um, in whatever size you're making it, I'm sure that your little loved one is going to appreciate it this fall and winter season. I'm Marley Bird, and this is the Marley Bird YouTube channel brought to you by Yarnspirations.com. This is Lucy and uh, Marley saying, make sure you smash that like button, hit subscribe, and I will catch all of you again later. You say bye, Lucy? Say bye. Bye, Lucy.